Hi everyone, Joe, Joe Leach here. Um, I would like to share with you today a little, uh, a quick little um, approach I use for product prioritization. A way of deciding what things we should build next because often as you as product managers will get requests from the organization as to what to build from the team as to get to as to what to build and this is a quick and easy straightforward way of assessing if it's a good idea if it's worth prioritizing or not um, it's called the decision diamond and it has four dimensions to it the four dimensions are simple enough so the first one might be simple as a as a business driver so your organization comes to you and says we need to be pushing more in this direction we need to increase this KPI, we need to do this, we need to make this initiative, we need to make that initiative. It's a way of the organization from on high, almost, I suppose, deciding which direction you need to take the product in. Um, there are three further dimensions then. So we also have user research. So how does user research um, support this? Is there user research findings that um, something is true? Is there a user research has come back and told us we need to do X? User research has told us come back and we've got to do why what does your user research telling you you should be doing next a further source of insight can of course be data so what is your what is your, the data analytics telling you about what's going on in your product right now where are the holes where are the gaps what's performing what's not performing data can uh, uh, give you a, an insight as to in essence how your product's performing right now um, and give you other uh, ideas as to where to take that particular product and data can also be used um, you know data from a b testing or, or variety of sources can give you a clue as to actually what's going on and again could be a great source of deciding what to do with a product and this thinking is based upon um, a talk that i saw from mohang minecraft's henrik kneiberg on he used a three-pointed triangle as his approach um, and i particularly like the way he included gut feel as part of the decision making process Finally then, um, and the most important of all probably is gut feel. And this is one that's either overly strong, which it can, can be in a, in a startup, so the founder can say, um, you know, this is the direction we're taking a product. And gut feel is very strong, typically in a, in a newer company or a uh, founder-led company. Um, gut feel can really push you forward. But often what can happen with larger organizations is gut feel is kind of um, is forgotten about. Is it sort of parked? It's sort of not relied on as being a great, a good source of, of decision making. So if the team feels this is a good idea or a senior stakeholder feels this is a good idea, often that's not being a good idea itself is not seen as being a reason to do it in a larger organization, which is a kind of shame because, as we, we talked about, startups are, are built on this and often gut feel can get lost. And the way that I use then the decision diamond is it gives you those four dimensions, those um, the business driver, the user research, the um, data and that gut feel. And you can start to then assess if that's worth doing or not. So if it's got one point on that on the diamond, so if it's just got gut feel, is there no data to back it up? Is there user research to back it up? Is it a business driver of the organization? If not, then it's maybe something to you know put on the back burner or re ignore. Are there two um, points to the diamond that are worth exploring? Is there data? Is there user feedback? Uh, do the two sides of that diamond add up? Is there two sources of, of insight as to what's going on? Again, if there is, um, it's a reason to do it. If there are three points to the, to the diamond, you can see again, if there's gut feel, there's data, there's user research, it's worth doing. If there's a business driver, there's data, there's user research, and there's a gut feel like it feels like the right thing to do, then absolutely that should be highly prioritized. If there are four points of the diamond that are, um, are full or complete, do it. It's a simple structure of saying, yep, yeah, let's get on with this and do this. If there are three, obviously it's less of a priority. If there are two, there's less of a priority. If there's just one, maybe that's a reason to go out and get more data to understand what's going on to feel why it doesn't feel like a good idea, to understand why there's only one point of data. Um, and that is a really quite a straightforward, simple way of deciding what to do next. And what I also like about the decision diamond is it's really easy for you to go in and sketch it on a whiteboard. You can just go in, sketch it out to senior stakeholders and say, this is how we make prioritized ideas of what's going on. Um, and you can particularly do that if you're worried that gut feel is maybe a bit strong or somebody's come to you with an idea that's not brilliant. You can sketch out the decision diamond and show how gut feel, their idea, fits into the wider prioritization framework that you're working on. So it's quite lightweight, this framework, which I like. It's easy to sketch on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. People see it, when they see it, get it immediately. So it's not as complicated as something like rice or some of those other more mathematical looking formulas, but it's a straightforward, simple way of making a product decision. And that's really why I like it and why I've had some good successes with it. A couple more videos on product management and UX stuff as well. Have a little look over here to start to see it. But again, thank you very much for listening and see you again soon. Bye bye. We done little dude, I think we're done, we're done.